Hey, we're gonna liven up this tissue box. Puffs. It's a, I thought they were all four and a quarter, but this one's four and a half, so we're gonna make it fit. First, we'll mark the centers of our reed. I find this center by just gently rolling. Not creasing, just rolling. Then put all my pieces together. I decided to do brown in the four corners, just for something different. Decorative. I paint all my baskets, but if you don't, you need something a little different. So, these are a great gift for grandma, good for a child's room, lots of good uses for these. So I start all baskets by laying down two. I usually put them this way, I think. These are half inch flat and they are measured at 19 inches. So I've got my two down. And I put one in the middle. There's my mark right there in the middle. I want to put one in the middle of here. And I've woven my first row. And it's that simple and I do it every time. Just because it's simple and easy to remember. Put these to the outside. I could put them anywhere. I could put my color in a bit. I'm going to put my color on the corners because I'm not very creative. I paint most of my baskets. I put a primitive finish on them. So I don't have color in the weave. I haven't in years. This is five eighths. Uh, it's what I happen to have. It's a smoked reed. It won't run. I didn't smoke it personally, but it was smoked when I purchased it. Here. If the holes are square, your base will be square. And the thing I forgot, I made so many of these, is there's a right side and a wrong side to materials and the rough side goes up so it's inside. So if you look at your material and you bend it and you see all those little hairs, those go up. My fingers are educated or just to look at it. You can see this a little smoother. That's a little rougher. So we're going to put that up. Not a crisis if you haven't done it. That's why watching the video all the way through helps a lot. And I have my spoke weight here, trying to give myself an idea if I'm at four and a half, about. I'm going to grab this guy, and I want to go, I know this box. This is how I start a base. Oh, oops, I need to go just a smidgen bigger. Like I said, it's four and a quarter by four and a half. What were they thinking? Now check your, your base. You want it to be square. You don't want anything down here. Your basket's gonna be shaped exactly like that. So the size of your holes dictates the shape of your basket. If they're square, your basket will be square. Now you want to upset your spokes. Go around and crease. Give them a good, if you soaked them long enough, they'll never break. They'll bend, they won't break. Very forgiving, but this makes the difference when weaving your basket, if these aren't nice and crisp, you have no line to follow and your basket will be harder to control in the beginning. I break one, snap it off about once a year and I weave a lot of baskets, so don't worry about that. Okay, let's find a clothespin and a piece of reed. Now this can be the top or the bottom of the basket. The way I make it, this is the top of the basket and it has a slot for the opening. Or this can be the bottom, it can sit down in here. It doesn't matter, I just don't wanna see all this edge on mine. So plan for that when you're looking at how you wanna make your basket as far as a pattern, and it'll become more evident later. So we're gonna start on one side, we're gonna stop weave. We're gonna go around and stop. So I went, this piece went over. So I wanna go under, under, under. I lift what I want to go behind. Push it as tight to that creased row as you can get. Stand this up. As you go around the corner, I want you to stand it up because we want this to be a fairly square basket. And under. Go around the corner. Stand this up. Pin them so they don't get away from you. Under. Under. And if you notice, the ones I went under, I had gone over before. So you can always check your work. Stand it up. 
go around, stand up those corners. Now we have stood up every other one. The next time around, we'll stand up the ones we didn't stand this time, or every other one. start on a different side. Don't ever start all your stuff in one place. You'll have a big mess. I went over the piece I started with, went behind the next one and snipped it off. Now I could have gone four, but it gets a little bunchy in this small basket. So here I'm going to start a different side. I always start the next side, the three o'clock side. Push this in here and two down. Push them just as far down. Now, all baskets look funny for the first three rows. Don't try to fix it. Just keep weaving. The third row pushes all of these down. The first row right now, see it's kind of floating. It wants to get away. That happens. And the only thing that's going to make it work is if you keep this down. Use your left hand, do a little work, come around, next. Just work where you are. Don't bother worry about where you are. Work on the spot you're in. Make this, don't crease your corner, but give it a nice smart little bend. Let's see, mine's pulled away. But now that I'm here and I've got something to push it down, I'm gonna do exactly that. But if I'd worried about it when I was over here, it wouldn't help me at all. Put a pin, I'm moving this pin. And this is where we overlap before. So I need to be really careful here for a minute. Pay attention. And you're always doing the opposite of the row before. And the handy part, the way to tell, is both you can look at the bottom and you can look at this. You went under, now you went over. And one more time. My read's a little stiff. Picking the best read you can helps the, the most with, with making a basket. I watched some Native Americans the other day using a jar and weaving around a jar. I've never woven around a mold. I was freehand weaving, but that would be really interesting. We're holding together pretty well, but see that wants to pop up. So it's going to take one more row. Look, mine popped up. Happens. I'm telling you. Okay, we've, we're to start on another side. We, this was our last start. Here's what it looks like. You put your material in on and over, so when you come around, you're gonna go over it, cover it up. You won't see this end from the inside or the outside. I'm a lap weaver. I like to have my base towards my belly and weave either on the table or in my lap. Usually my baskets are larger and I weave in my, on my lap. If you try to weave your basket all on the table, you tend to be doing a lot of tugging and pulling and you have no control. We're here. I can see exactly what I have. I want to straighten things up. I want to pull. Let's talk about feet while we're here on number three. Our basket, to keep it all pulled to the bottom, there are choices. You could take your fingers and pull it all down. I don't like it. I like my fingers where they are. So, put this here and weave this row. Okay. Do that corner nicely. And here. But see these are popped down? Eey. This is easier to do than pulling this way. So I just pull them up and I pull the center one a tiny bit more so that when I'm done, it sits on the four corners. Corners, let's talk about corners. Corner is the way you make most of your mistakes because you forgot whether you were an over or an under. So pay attention here, you were over. Just think to yourself, under, under. Don't say it out loud, people think you're crazy. So see with the gap. That's what happened. I've been doing this for years, and I still, on my second row, I have gaps. But I know that if I just keep going, and that a lot of it is this material is really stiff. This tool, bent tool, popsicle stick, screwdriver, what happened is I hadn't laid this exactly over the top, or it moved. You know, stuff happens. Now, see, this is holding it all together. Don't worry about it until the third row. Nobody's basket looks good till the third row. And it's all about adjustments. Okay, now let's, I'm gonna only overlap two because you can see if you've got a really stiff piece, it pushes the next row out of whack. Do this, this, this. Okay, there we have this. I'll 
let's see. Oh, it fits. This is very good. And like I said, the natives I saw weaving had their basket in their container, whatever it was, in here, and they were weaving like this. I've been freehanding for so many years it wouldn't work for me, but you can try it. What I'm doing, you don't see me doing, is assessing how this side looks. This is down a bit. All of them are straight, as long as there's a same distance between each one, you're doing well. This one was cracked, but by the time you're done, it will lay right in there and nobody will ever see it. See, we're back here again. This one wants to move. And we started here. We're going to cut here. And always the good side is up. Always, always. I don't. This is not a plan. With the reed, the, the plan for this basket was the reeds I have wet. We're weaving with. So here we go. I like my material off to the side. I start out weaving a basket right handed so that I'm coming down the right side of my basket. And I continue that way. But after those first few rows, when you pick it up, you either learn how to weave with your left hand, like this, just wrap, go around the edge, just pull it out here and down and keep the, everything pulled nice and tight. Or, if you want to do yours differently, you can, on a stop weave, you can weave the other way. I'm just in such a habit of, go of weaving with my left hand that it would confuse me to change hands. Now look at this guy, he's going left. There you go. Oh, that's right. He's going the wrong way. It's a little harder to weave. If you've woven with me before, you know I weave big and round and get some volume. I start with a four and a half inch bottom and end up with a six inch top. Well, that would be unacceptable for this basket. The other thing you can do is if you're not sure when you're gonna stop and you need to do some planning, could have done this at the beginning or I can do it now. I love basket weaving because there's no hard fast rules. It's a good thing because I forget most of them. But we know we want this to be five inches because I measured it. Not because I'm brilliant, because I measured it. So I want it to be about there. So I have to plan now what's going to go next and next, then be done. I started to, if you see your basket starts to collapse, that means you pulled a bit tight. So let's loosen that up. When I go around corners, I use this finger often as a gauge just to keep that open. See, it's just a nice variety, I think, of five eighths. Ooh, get down there. Sometimes on the corners, especially on a tight basket, you have to use a finger. And near my bottom, I've decided to be different and I want to put a row up round because my basket's going to be upside down. Gently shape your basket. So there's my mark and I'm going to put one more row to go under the rim because you always have to have a row under the rim. Let's see how I did. This will shrink a bit too as, we, as it dries and I've got to put the rim on. So I'm doing pretty well. 5 eighths flat is my rim. And you don't have to take everything slow. As you are confident, just weave. Especially when weaving them to sell. The faster, the more money you make. Now we're going to look at everything because it's the end. We've gotten to the end. So we want to look and make sure it sits pretty good. See, it doesn't rock. It sits well. Now, we're going to bend over the ones that will bend over, like this. I it's kind of tall. It only needs to go inside down to here. Now, I only need this to go to here, so I'm going to trim them all up. Mm, right there. Ooh, that's a stiff read. This one I know I'm cutting off, but there we go. I want to bend this inside. I'm using my thumb out here to poke that up. This one I'm going to show you how to use a tool. You can use a screwdriver, a popsicle stick works, whatever you've got works. Make an opening and just scoop that in there. You have to roll it a little bit. There's just no other way. See, just roll. And I, again, 
I gave up on tools when my son was two because he kept taking off of my screwdriver, but it, my fingers were all attached. So I learned to use those for tools. So if this were the piece to be trimmed and I came at it this way, the blade of my scissors would make this as close as I could get is up here, and I don't want that. So if I hold my basket with my left hand consistently, I'm assuming everybody's right-handed. I'm sorry for you left-handed people, but I can't think both. So you hold your basket here, and this blade will get very close because this is on the outside, so I can bring this right in and get a nice, nice trim. So hold your basket by the base, always, and trim right in here. Turn, turn, turn. That's how you get a nice trim. Here we are. We're going to put this as a 5 8 this is a 3 8 And I want to go through these holes for my lacer to attach my rim. And the point of pins is so that you don't have this. You need that to be sitting nice and snug to this edge. Pull that in there. Otherwise, when you coat a lace it and put your two rims together, you won't have a gap. Now I've overlapped. Again, I don't want my ends to butt up together. It'll make an egg-shaped basket. When I first started, everybody's rim looked like this. There was this opening here, and I think that just wasn't refined. Finish. So unless I'm making a very primitive basket, I put this in the middle. And it's just like a molding. I happen to have seen a basket made by Native Americans, in the, and this was in the 1980s, and they had made it in the 1900s, and they were using round rim reed to make their rims look nice. And I thought, that's brilliant. What you just saw me do was I had to span a little bit. I had a little bit of too loose, uh, too tight, so I just pulled it open. So, see. Six pins will do just about any basket. Seven, too many, and they just get in the way. Okay, you can't overlap these. This just doesn't happen. So you make it as close as you can. And then you trim this as an overlap. I go over two or three. Mark this here. Now this basket doesn't have a front and a back. <clears throat> it's square. But I do put well, the inside rim on one side and the outside rim on an opposite side. If you try to have all this together and hold it when you're rimming, you're doomed. So practice rims on opposite sides. If there were a handle here, this would be 9 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock. So don't put any two things together. It just makes your work more difficult. We're going to go for a good piece of material. I'm looking for that side, and then I want to push it down in here just like I did my overlap. I know two times around this basket will be plenty. Actually, it's a small basket. I'll give myself a little bit more. And there. This thing could be 25 feet long. I don't want to pull that all the way through. So I, I found sort of a halfway point. So I'm going to put this in the first opening, pull it through, and I know sometimes this thing will be six feet long. So I park my end. Then I go back and make my adjustments. Pull really hard at, away if you're right-handed. If you're left-handed, do the opposite. Go the opposite. And pull tight. See, I want those to be nice and snug. Tight. Don't feel bad. Yarn on this basket. Push on this basket. Do whatever it takes to make this basket conform to your wishes. We are back where we started, right over here. Look at this. What do we think of that? Isn't that lovely? Now, make an opening here because I want to hide this end. I'm going to sneak in here. Pull this down. Make adjustments because I just made an opening and pulled it apart and the, where I started I pulled it apart and this trim it. Now we have a 
nice looking little basket. So let's shape it. I'm going to trim this tail off because I don't want it to catch the tail I started with. I don't want it to catch on my boxes I'm pulling it out. Here we go. In here I saw my rim. I have a little tail thing too. I don't love that. Didn't catch it with my laser. Let's get it out of there. So this could be your entire basket. And it's a bit hairy. I use a burns matic torch on mine because I'm going to paint them. But you can take a little snips and just get the hairies off. That quarter inch happened to be hairy. There you have it. If you want, you can have this as the top of your basket. You could swing cut you a little wooden lid if you wanted with a slot in it. I turn my basket this way and I start cutting. Snip this here and this here. I find it's easier to do it afterwards. So now I will take a dab of glue and I use a really good wood glue. I don't have to be as careful but I want you to be careful because you can't stain or do anything else if you get glue on your basket. I mean the glue is on the part you want to stain. So this is all I do. So I would rather have mine just have a little opening here. But it's all a matter of personal preference. And you can see how the pattern works out a little different. Um, plan on having one under the rim so that you don't make your pattern work that way. You can mark your five inches, the height of your basket, um, from the beginning and sort of map this out and make a maybe a rainbow print for a child's room. It's just really good at covering up something that uh, these just don't, are not designer. So there you go. Let that dry and you will have your basket.